Hello, this is Sart or Brian Rowe with Mythic MTG Tech number 344 looking at the top 10 Planeswalkers in Commander. Planeswalkers are amazing in Commander. They are spells that just keep giving and giving and giving. I was motivated to put this list together after an article came out by a local Magic player here in the Seattle area who's over on Magic the Seattling who runs the blog Dies to Doomblade EDH Reviews. He did this wonderful survey where he surveyed the entire community to figure out which were the best and worst Planeswalkers for Commander. Now, I disagree with this list some, but I definitely agree with a lot of it and David makes some wonderful points in this list. I would head over to his blog, check out the list for yourself, uh, leave a comment. He is one of the most competitive EDH players that I know and writes wonderful stuff. But the feedback from the community that he got hundreds of people to take this survey is what really makes this interesting to me. My honorable mentions here include Venser and Koth. Venser has a wonderful theme and a lot of power at that five casting cost level in two of my favorite colors, blue and white. And Koth, I think, is just criminally underplayed. Koth it can be a lot of ramp in the right red deck or a win condition after board wipes. Very, very solid card. Soren did not make my list because I just hate the design exploitation that is really there in Soren. Super powerful Planeswalker. I understand if you're playing super competitive, I can see putting a six casting cost spell that does 30 damage into your deck. Very, very powerful card. The number 10 spot here, I've got one that did not make that community list at all. Garruk Relentless. This is an awesome card. One of my favorite cards in kind of a mid-range modern deck, and it's super playable in Commander has the ability to protect itself, has the ability to ping a lot of people's generals and flip, has a wonderful ability to tutor through your library, can give you death touch wolves. The death touch wolves basically tell people, go attack anyone else. Wonderful political planeswalker, very, very nice overall. In the number nine spot here, I've got another green planeswalker and I really had a tough choice here in which exactly of these planeswalkers to go with. Garruk Collar of the Beasts is my favorite because you need to draw extra cards in green. You're going to ramp really quickly and drawing awesome creatures off the top of your deck as many as five at a time is incredibly good. The minus three is really nice, allows you to put those giant creatures into play and the emblem says, go grab creatures directly from your deck whenever you cast a creature. Really, really nice. On the super spiky competitive side, if I was doing this just for competitive, Garruk Wildspeaker would be way, way up there. Really nice forecasting cost ramp and green is all about the ramp. Has the ability to defend himself and has a very nice ultimate that can often let your tokens go over the top. The number eight spot here, I've got one that is on the top one, two, or three for lots of other people's lists. That is Jace the Mind Sculptor. Jace has the ability to brainstorm every turn. The thing is, in Commander, it's a bit of a political game. People see Jace and they just go wild. They're like, we're killing you, we're killing your Jace, and we're killing everything you put out from this point on. You're already playing blue, so you're a huge target at the table. Jace often ends up being a forecasting cost brainstorm, but if he lives, he's going to win the game for you. I understand why people go after him. Raw power level, he's probably number two, but the fact that he's so scary means that you better be winning here soon. Tamio is actually my favorite on more of a casual side. Tamio often draws you a giant number of cards and has the political ability to just tap down one pesky permanent pretty much indefinitely. People will leave Tamio on the board because of the political power of being able to tap down a permanent every turn. Tez the Seeker. Ooh, we're 
have another amazing blue planeswalker here. The ability to go get almost anything in your deck for lower casting cost artifacts is incredible. Mana Crypt, Soul Ring, any ramp that you need, some wing conditions, maybe swords, really, really powerful. Teferi has made it way up there on other people's lists, and I have Teferi here as an honorable mention. Teferi is beautiful design. Having planeswalkers that can be commanders is amazingly cool. As some of you know, I even advocated for the format where you could use any planeswalker as a commander. It's a lot of fun. Definitely recommend giving it a try. But with a six casting cost commander, it can be a little bit rough. I don't have it as high on the power level as other people do because it really limits you into one type of an artifact ramp deck build around, but you are very susceptible to being blown out. Where Tez the Seeker can go into lots of other decks, that one less casting cost matters a lot, and the ability to just grab exactly what you need early on is very, very powerful. Here I've got the new Jace VP, Merfolk Looter on steroids, flips and turns into a Planeswalker that might be able to keep you alive, but more accurately is going to let you play all those crazy cantrips again from your graveyard. Really, really powerful Planeswalker here for two casting cost. In Commander, most people don't have that really early game take out your two drop removal and they're going to be really sorry for it. Next here, we've got Duretti, and I'm not going to concentrate too much on Duretti because I have an entire deck tech coming up with a fan of the channel, awesome player, and it's going to be coming out here in the next few days. I'll talk about Duretti a lot in that deck tech. Duretti has that wonderful design, can be a commander, and is one of the most powerful combo commanders out there. Can combo extremely quickly, perfect in an artifact red deck. Elspeth Sun's Champion. This card is so much better than I had ever thought. When I first read this card, I'm like, oh, it puts out three one ones and it destroys big creatures. Six casting costs. Like, I want a lot more out of my six casting cost spells. Then I played against it. Can take over the board, changes the whole dynamic of the game. Very, very powerful, lasting effect for white. I recommend this not just in token decks, but also in control decks and at the top of a curve for a competitive deck. Sarkin Vol. This is one I'm going to get a little bit of flack over with an honorable mention to Sarkin the Mad. Sarkin Vol. Very powerful ability. If you're in red-green, just being able to give that haste to your creatures and win super quickly is amazing. Nice ultimate there. Crush your opponent with dragons. Now, Sarkin the Mad is a mad card to play in EDH. You're going to kill yourself, but who cares? You get awesome cards. Red and black card advantage planeswalker that stays out there lives through board wipes like damnation i love playing this card but play it at your own risk the colorless planeswalkers we need more of them colorless planeswalkers are everybody's favorite car and liberated at seven casting cost is my favorite of these two for edh because of the targeted removal exile target permanent Ugin, the Spirit Dragon, though, could easily be in this spot also. All is Dust, on a Planeswalker, has the ability to continually Lightning Bolt things, and an ultimate that is just awesome. In the same vein of these two Planeswalkers, I want to remind people that Veraska is out there. Veraska is criminally underplayed. In green, where you can ramp, the removal and alternative win conditions are both very, very valuable. Also discourages people from going after Veraska. Usually gets a two or three for one out of Veraska. Karin Liberated, amazing Planeswalker. And Ugin is incredible. Wonderful options here. The number one, though, for me is clearly Dak Faden. Three casting cost Planeswalkers are pretty rare. And this Planeswalker steals everyone's soul ring. Who doesn't want three soul rings? The discard and draw ability that is on there, or draw and discard to be accurate, 
is incredible. Power it with Notion Thief, and you're drawing and somebody else is discarding. But EDH, you've got 100 card decks, and being able to filter through, fill your graveyard, throw some awesome stuff in there, puts this card at number one, even though it requires two colors. Two color Planeswalkers are a little bit tougher to get into play in EDH, especially you've got to have that mana fixing. But when you get out a card with this type of potential to get you to the cards that you need and take ramp from other players, it is dominating. Wonderful, powerful card at three casting cost. I am a huge fan of Dak Faden, one of the best Planeswalkers ever. What list would you like to see for my next top 10 list? Thank you to everybody who's over there supporting the channel on Patreon, and thank you to Chess.com as a sponsor. Now I've got this blank screen here. Hopefully we're going to put some awesome stuff up here. Subscribe to the channel. Watch my other videos. Thank you guys all for supporting the channel. I greatly appreciate it. And until next time, choose the cards wisely.